And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And a quick thank you for Ralph for doing that just to make me feel better, right? <laughs> About my air, so. Well, this is the morning of uh, December 24th. You know what that means, right? It means you have to wait. <laughs> it's not quite Christmas according to the church calendar, right? Close, almost, soon. But... We're told through these lessons that there's still a bit of preparation to do before certainly the Christmas baby comes. The baby, well, according to the lessons this morning, two babies, right, are to be celebrated. Neither one is Santa, none in here, not in here. This morning, it's stories of John and Jesus. You see, this morning story about the angel appearing to Mary the story actually begins a few verses earlier with that faithful, old, righteous priest named Zechariah, who has been given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go into the holiest of holies in the temple and represent all of God's people for that day, right? He has been uh, highly honored. So the first story starts with faithful Zechariah and faithful Elizabeth, they have been so blessed by God that they should have at least a dozen children by now, right? That's one of the ways that uh, you know God has blessed you as a family. But for them, there's no such luck. All lifelong, no kids, none. Until suddenly, the angel that shows up to Mary first shows up to Elizabeth and to old Zechariah. The angel tells Zechariah, better get the baby's room ready. Postmenopausal Elizabeth is to get one of those late in life surprises that some of you might know about. The news is this couple is finally going to have a baby and are told they will name him John. And we'll learn that story as we go forward this year. They're told that this baby will set the stage for another baby and that those two will change the world. Now, can you imagine that? Well, if you're Zachariah, you can't. He goes mute. We're told that he's speechless for the whole pregnancy and does not say a word until the baby is born. But Elizabeth, Elizabeth feels joy and surprise and her disgrace of childlessness, which is part of Israelite society, her disgrace is soon to be taken away from her. And then, and then the story moves to our lesson this morning, to another angel visit. But instead of someone who gets to go into the holiest of holies in the temple, this angel appears, you know this story, to a little nobody girl from nowhere in Israel. Nothing special. Now you probably know this as well. At this time, girls uh, could be married as soon as 10. Most girls got married shortly after 12 in their first period. Mary is one such little girl. She's been betrothed, engaged, pledged and married to this man, Joseph, but they're not yet married. The story says she's still a virgin, meaning untouched. This is the girl the angel shows up for now. And it's so different from that first angel visit. You also know by now the angel's message to her starts out how most angels start out. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. You and I know we would be shaking. Mary, you have found favor with God. You're about to get pregnant. Exciting news, right? <laughs> Mary is young, but no dummy. She knows how babies are made, and she's not yet ready to make any. She's not yet with her man-to-be. Not in that way. 
And the angel says something like, relax. <laughs> this conception and birth to be is theological, not gynecological, right? We'll get this figured out. God's spirit will get this done. The angel says, trust me. Better yet, trust God's promise. Better yet, just trust God on all of this. Your baby is going to change the world. And you get to be his mommy. But the story says Mary is still not quite yet convinced. And there's good reason for her to be concerned. Pregnant outside of marriage. Pregnant not by your husband-to-be. This time, the disgrace is becoming pregnant, right? Instead of not having a baby. Now, maybe you knew this too, that uh, this is a time of honor killing, you know, where families turn against one of their own in order to somehow save the family's honor. So Mary knows, most likely, that this pregnancy does not keep her safe. She knows the trouble that she faces and the danger that this pregnancy puts her in. She knows that she probably will be rejected by family, most likely rejected by her fiance, perhaps even stoned for what is perceived to be adultery. She's pledged in marriage, you see. Mary says yes, despite all of this. I can do this. For Jesus' sake. To the angel, Mary simply and bravely says, Here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. You want to shout, you go, girl, right? But did you notice the next part of this story? It says, Mary quickly got up from this angel visit and did what? She ran. Now, she didn't run to tell her parents the good news, didn't run to tell Joseph what's going to happen. She ran far into the countryside to be with her Aunt Elizabeth, to be safe, for now at least. She's safe, the story says, for the next three months that she spends with her Auntie Liz during her pregnancy. And then Mary makes preparation to return home to family and to Joseph. She's already beginning to show, I'm sure, at three months. There's no getting around it. And she's now willing to face whatever the consequences are of this pregnancy. It should be pretty evident as we listen to these Advent and Christmas stories that today and tonight and tomorrow are not the script of a Hallmark Christmas movie, right? These aren't stories where everybody in the end hugs and kisses and all things are better for everyone. Not that I watch them, but I, but I know of them, right? <laughs> Elizabeth's boy will grow up to speak uh, truth to power and he ends up beheaded in prison. Mary's boy Jesus will grow up to speak truth to power and he will end up crucified with criminals out at the city dump. But you know this too. We remember and we tell these stories because these stories say that the God of all creation is about to break into the world in a radically new way. That God enters our world this time through the back door and the side door, and not down the chimney, right? That God in his mercy comes to us in Jesus Christ. And that God does so for a life-changing, society-changing, world-changing purpose. We're here because we uh, trust in these stories, and we believe that God in Jesus has come to heal all that is broken. We trust that God comes in Jesus to restore and redirect and remake all the whole world. As Luke will say later, starting in Judea, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Including here. Including us. Now. 
Now, I've tried using some songs lately, but I know there's no Advent jingle by Mariah Carey to uh, flower up these stories. Though, yeah, good. <laughs> Though there is an old song by someone named Joan Osborne who once asked, what if God was one of us? What if? Well, the stories say that God was one of us in Jesus. Then she goes on to ask, well, what if God had a name? And we say to her, God does. It's Jesus. These stories both say, God keeps promises to save and restore what God has made, whomever God has made. These stories are told to you and to me so that you know you are among the ones in Jesus Christ that God is saving and restoring and healing and now sending out to share the good news. I said just a moment ago that there really is no Advent jingle for this event. And apart from Joan Osborne, there is a song, a powerful one that we sing. Little, pregnant, brave, proud Mary sings out her faith in God, in God's promises, and in God's saving grace of justice and mercy and love. Her song is called the Magnificat. Yes, that's in Latin, but it's magnificent in any and every language. So now with the choir, it's your turn to sing out your praise and your faith in God's saving work in Christ. Listen as you sing. The tune is a little bit different than Holden. <laughs> My head runs right to Holden here. In it, you will learn just what it is that Jesus wants you to do, not just at Christmas, but every day of the rest of your life. So, with Mary, let it be with you according to God's saving grace too. For you too have found favor with God no less. Amen.